Hi, I'm Daniel, I'm a sleep physician, and if you have insomnia, this channel is for you. In a review today of Wrecked by Steve Prentice. This book talks about how our attempts at becoming more healthy keeps us from just that. We can learn a lot here that pertains to insomnia. The irony and the twist in my review is how the very chapter on sleep is exactly the type of stuff that is so insomnia provoking. Big, big welcome back to each and everyone out there. And if you're new to the channel, then uh, you are super welcome, of course, also. Uh, today, as mentioned, I, I wanna talk about this this book, Wrecked by Steve um, Prentice. And it was Jonathan, one of our, our viewers here, who uh, recommended it to me. And um, I, I wanna say this, that um, th th there's a lot here that pertains to the problems we're having now in like the insomnia or the sleep universe which we talk about, I think, you know, if, if you, um, if you feel that this, this episode may not be so helpful to you, well, scroll back, scroll to the, to, to the end of this review. I think it's something really, really interesting there. Um, now the overall message I think in this book is that if, you know, if you are trying to get help, you know, you, 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 if your attempts at living your best life is like reaching this like optimal state of health, if those attempts, are keeping you in a state where you're just stressed and depressed and anxious, then perhaps it better it's better to step away from that and just do whatever me makes you happy because ultimately that is all that matters. You know, it talks about it's it's I think it's focused. Uh, this book is really written for somebody that is is you know trying like diet and exercise kind of in, a, in the extreme to like optimize their health and how that not may not be a great approach. Now, that said, let's read a few passages here that I thought were really um. Uh, helpful and, and in terms of like we can learn a lot in terms of insomnia as well and then again <laughs> i think it's a super interesting twist in the end here um so i'm reading from uh page nine here as a practicing chiropractor working with thousands of patients for the last 20 years i've observed and experienced firsthand a puzzling phenomenon oftentimes the more we do to tr improve our health the worse it gets is this 100 percent of the time no but it's very common in fact it's becoming more and more common the more health obsessed we become as a society and the motivation to write this book stemmed from watching the health and quality of life of too many people be destroyed by adopting health practices that, while sounding good, actually causes harm. Isn't it ironic that one of the biggest threats to our health is our attempts to get healthy? In practicing over the years, I have also noticed that patients tend to fall into these three categories. Number one, those with symptoms resulting from the effects of accumulated stress. Number two, those with symptoms of accumulated stress plus the negative effects of their attempts to fix it. And three, those uh, that were hit by a truck or other trauma. You know, this first passage here <clears throat> uh, where he says, like, a motivation to write this book is how he sees that people that are people are becoming more health obsessed and that's keeping them from not becoming healthy. That really, really resonated with me. Like, I see this all the time that, you know, the more we as a society try to get more sleep and sleep better and focus on sleep, the worse it gets. Like, the more insomnia we have, 100%. <clears throat> And then the other thing that I really thought was interesting was he says that he sees a lot of people with symptoms of accumulated stress plus the negative effects of their attempts to fix it, which is just like insomnia. Like I, I see so many people that have had initially some trouble sleeping, but the, the, the effects of trying to solve it is the real problem, which I, I talk a lot, a lot about that. So I'm not going to spend more time there. I'm just going to jump to uh, page 24 where he describes what he thinks is, is really behind uh, all the problems that he's seeing. So he says, looking back over the last 20 years, I can, uh, I can state that the health status of new patients presenting to our office is getting worse and worse. Addiction rates are skyrocketing, anxiety, depression are all time high, sleep difficulties, fatigue, headaches, immune system disorders are commonplace. And he, uh, he goes over why he thinks it is. He's, he says in one uh, header here that stress levels are sky high. I believe that, but uh, I think even more importantly here on page 26, he says, many of the do-it-yourself cures are backfiring. The second factor in the storm is the inadvertently piling on of additional stress during the attempt to improve our lifestyles. Whether it's someone trying to clean up their act in an attempt to overcome a health concern, changing their diet in the hope of losing weight, or an already healthy person seeking to achieve optimum superhuman status, the current recommendations floating around the internet and health circles often result in adding gas 
to an already ranging stress fire. This again, uh, perfect uh, analogy of what's happening in the in the sleep world. That um, you know, uh, a lot of people uh, have kind of like milder sleep issues or none at all, and they just stumble across these recommendations online, which says like you should do this and this and that and you should sleep this much, and if not, this is gonna happen, and that just adds fuel to a raging stress fire, exactly as he describes it. And um, I wanted to go over one more thing before we get to the final thing here. Um, in, the, in the page, um, here it is, page 50, he, um, he describes like, uh, you know, more of reasons why, um, the, why good advice is so hard to come by. And he says, uh, and he, he describes, he talks about food particularly. I believe that we have become uh, so obsessed with all things food for several reasons. It is easy for experts to sell. There's not a lot of money to be made by telling you to go home and work on your stress. A new diet theory though, ka -ching, that's easy pickings. This one is big. Like, um, it, 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 you know, trans, uh, moving like from, from diet to sleep here. When it comes to... Um, uh, you know, I, you could say the same thing. I believe that we become obsessed with all things sleep. Like a lot of you listening here, you know, you have insomnia. That's that's you know that's one thing. But uh, a, a lot of people have insomnia, develop insomnia because they, they're told uh, about you know the need to sleep more. So, so it, coming from that place, I believe that we become obsessed with all things sleep. You know, let's argue that, and then say it's easy for experts to sell. It's, it's, this is so true. There's not a lot of money to be made by telling you to work on CBTI, you know? Uh, you know, um, uh, use, use like behavioral techniques and stress reduction like that. But a new, uh, so exchanging here again, a new gadget, a new sleep gadget, a new uh, supplement, a new medication, catching that's where the money is. So that is a big problem, just like he describes it here. I'm gonna go one more thing, maybe two more. People accept it. We love to blame outside factors for our shortcomings. We're an outside-in kind of people. We don't want to look inside and self-examine. We'd rather blame food in this case. Well, you know, not 100% pertinent, but it is, it is, we are more inclined to look outside, you know? We're more inclined to say, I can't sleep because, um, you know, this, uh, uh, what should I, what example? I can't sleep because my husband is snoring like that wakes me up or I can't sleep because my bed is comfortable, things like that. Uh, rather than, you know, you know, finding that root cause, which often is related to like um, behaviors and kind of maladaptive behaviors and um, not quite understanding, you know, insomnia and things like of that nature. But let, let's, uh, let's conclude there with um, exploring this book. I think overall, um, it's a great book if you uh, if you identify yourself as somebody that is something of a health freak and that has been a negative for you. But then finally here, page 127, you know, I read this. So this is about sleep in particular. I know, I know you're busy. We're all busy. I realize you're not a kid and may not have the luxury of sleeping until nine every morning. Do what you can. If your wake up time is fixed, do the job or school, then tinker with bedtime. Go to bed earlier. Start winding down sooner. Get yourself uh, blackout curtains and make your bedroom as dark as possible. Stop watching TV before bed and disconnect from your devices earlier. Make it happen. The extra sleep will pay off. If you have trouble with waking up during the night, it's probably because of spiking adrenaline. Sugar and salt can help you uh, e either keep some pretzels by your bedside uh, to eat or make sure you have some salty carbs before bed. Ultimate goal to sleep 8 and ten to 10 hours a night, soundly and interrupted. This is insane. This is insane advice. It's just the type of stuff that produces so much insomnia. And I was like, this is so ironic that this guy had so many great insights and then and then finishes off with that. I'm like, oh my gosh. So again, like if you're kind of a health freak and um, you recognize that this book might help you, um, I think there are definitely some insights. I hope I share them in a, in a meaningful way with you. And, um, and uh, I'm gonna conclude there. Uh, any comments are super welcome as always. Uh, send me an email or leave a comment here. My email address is daniel.insomniainsight.co and hope to have you back here real soon. Bye-bye.